Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are having a great day so far. So today we are going to continue with our series on installing the Pale Rain Jailbreak on this iPad 6th generation, which is currently on iPadOS version 17.0. In previous iterations of the series, we installed the exploit using an Intel-based Mac, as well as an Apple Silicon-based Mac, specifically the M1 Pro chip. However, in this video, we are going to be installing the exploit using a Windows-based system. And there are some caveats to this process. It's a little bit, or I should say quite significantly different in comparison to the uh, Mac uh, installation processes. So without getting too far ahead of myself, let's go over to the computer, uh, go over some caveats first, and then we can get started on that process. So here we are in front of the Windows PC. If I could uh, get the camera to stop shaking. And we're going to move on to installing Pale Rain. However, we first need to go over a few things. So Pale Rain is currently a work in progress. It's compatible with the A11 chipset. So that includes the iPhone X and certain earlier devices on iOS 15.0 or later. With uh, some, uh, like I said, caveats for those A11 devices. And on those devices, you must first disable your passcode and you will not be able to use your passcode or other SCP functionality until you boot into a stock iOS state. So uh, sub functionality includes things such as, for example, Face ID, Touch ID, Apple Pay, uh, the passcode itself, of course. I believe that the iPad 6th generation is an A10 Fusion chip. So we will not necessarily need to worry about that in this instance. However, if you are utilizing an A11 device, then you will not be able to use uh, those features mentioned. Also, if you have an A11 device on iOS 16 and you've set a passcode before, you will need to erase all content and settings in order to begin the jailbreak. So that's just something to keep in mind if uh, you are using an A11 device uh, with Pale Rain in general. So for Windows installations uh, regarding Pale Nexus specifically, if you attempt to use a virtual machine or some sort of Windows uh, virtual box, VMware subsystem for Linux, that kind of thing, you will not succeed with uh, trying to use Pale Nix and you will need to obtain a bootable medium and follow uh, some steps in this video uh, to use that bootable medium as well. As well as if you're using a computer with an AMD Ryzen CPU, you will probably run into issues. There are some reports that it's possible to perform this exploit with a Ryzen CPU, but it's pretty spotty, especially as when I was going through Reddit and seeing other forum posts of the like. Some people have had success, but the majority of them uh, did not, so it's generally not recommended. And of course, if you do run into issues and the only computer you have has a Ryzen CPU, uh, you should probably somehow use a Mac or a computer with an Intel CPU uh, while trying to perform uh, this jailbreak. So the jailbreak that we are going to be uh, going through today is uh, Pale Rain, but it's in uh, the form of Pale Nix, which is a live bootable Linux environment, which allows you to quickly run Pale Rain on a compatible device. And for these steps, uh, we are going to need a few things. Uh, the first being a 128 megabyte or greater USB drive. I just happen to have this uh, in a SanDisk one laying around here. Uh, I'm not sure if this capacity is going to work, but we'll give it a shot. If I switch this out, then I will say so. Uh, moving on and moving forward. If you don't have a USB drive, but you have another form of supported removable bootable hardware, so if you're a little bit older like me, such as a CD or a DVD, you can use that instead of a USB drive. And what we are also going to need is the latest version of Pale Nix, as well as a program called Ventoy. So you can visit this URL here, which will also be posted in the description. And on this GitHub page would be the latest uh, version of Pale Nix. We can go over to the right sidebar and under the releases tab, we can go ahead and select the latest release. And we can also install the AMD 64 ISO 
in my particular case. Similarly, the URL posted here will also be in the description for the latest event toy release. Uh, let's go ahead and scroll down and over here in the assets, uh, we can go ahead and install or in this case, download the Windows release here. I have taken the installed Ventoy zip package, placed it on my desktop, went ahead and extracted it to the desktop here. So we have our Ventoy uh, file here. We will go ahead and at this point, once we have and download our Palenix ISO and the Ventoy file, we can go ahead and insert our USB stick into the side of the computer. We can make sure the USB stick is empty and does not contain any data as that data will be completely overwritten in this following step. And now we can navigate to the ventoy.x file and go ahead and open that. So in the Ventoy program itself, there are quite a few options available to us. Uh, however, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and keep it simple. And just to make sure that the appropriate uh, device is selected, there's only one USB port on this uh, Surface Pro 3 computer. So this is the correct USB stick in my case, and we're going to go ahead and click install to begin the process. You'll receive a warning indicating that the device will be formatted and all the data will be lost. So once again, make sure that you back up any data that's on that USB stick before continuing with the process. Also, the device will be formatted, all data will be lost, continuing showing a double check. <laughs> so that's actually a nice that they do that. So make sure that any data is backed up first. And then after that, you can go ahead and proceed. And it's going to take some time. After it finishes, you should receive a notification indicating that the Ventoy application has been successfully installed to the device. So something that I neglected to mention here is that after Ventoy is installed, you will need to drag and drop the pale Nix ISO onto the device itself. Uh, this is going to be retroactively inserted and uh, yeah, so after you do that, then you can go ahead and boot from the USB. So from here, the process is going to vary depending on what uh, type of computer you have, as well as what type of BIOS. Since we are now going to be rebooting the system, we are going to be booting directly into the BIOS, and we're going to be disabling secure boot, as well as booting directly from the USB stick. So I will show those steps as they are on the Surface Pro 3, if you just happen to be using one. However, on other computers, of course, you may need to research and determine what your BIOS key is, as well as uh, how to disable secure boot within that particular BIOS, whether it's MSI or ASUS or whatever it is. So that being said, uh, let's go ahead and shut down the computer and then when we start up again, we will be at the BIOS screen. So the computer is currently shut down and on the Surface Pro 3, you will need to hold the volume up button and the power button until the computer boots. And while continuing to hold the volume up button, you will be presented with the BIOS screen. So down here, we can see that I've already disabled secure boot control it will simply use the arrow keys to navigate to secure boot control. And then you would press enter to disable or enable it. In this case, we are going to be disabling it. And to boot directly from the USB, we are going to navigate to configuring the alternate system boot order. And when we press enter, we will go ahead and select USB first, and then SSD. And once we have selected those two options, we can go ahead and select exit setup, save configuration and reset. And 
if you have followed all of those steps correctly, you should be presented with the event toy screen here. So if you have done this correctly, then you should see the Palenix uh, image file loaded through Ventoy. So we can go ahead and hit enter. And we can go ahead and boot directly into Palenix at this point. So after you press enter, hopefully after a few screen changes, you will be presented by this Palenix 1.1.0 screen, at least as of the time of this video. And from here, you can use the arrow keys to navigate down to shell and then press enter. And now we are on the Palenix shell. From here, you can simply type pale ray and hit enter. And here it will be waiting for devices. At this point, you can unplug the USB stick and then plug in your lightning to USB A cable. I'm still going to be using this Alex DCSD diagnostic cable that I have and plugging it into the target device, which is going to be this iPad sixth generation. So just plug that in here and then plug the other end into the device itself. Click on trust on the device and then unplug and replug again and then the device will begin entering recovery mode. Once the device is in recovery mode, uh, it should present a screen similar to this. And the screen itself should indicate to press enter when ready to enter DFU mode. So we can go ahead and hit enter. And then we can also follow the same instructions that are presented on the screen. Make sure you do this correctly, otherwise your device will not enter DFU mode. It will wait to reconnect and we will go ahead and attempt to enter DFU mode again, in this case. Now the device has entered DFU mode successfully and the process should begin. It will boot into Pongo OS. And on the device itself, we can see that it is also booting into Pale Rain. Waiting a little bit, the device should reboot, booting into the kernel. And once the device has rebooted, we should now see that we have Pale Rain available to select. So let's go ahead and select that. We see similar options to what we've seen in the previous install tutorials as well. So we have Saleo, our ability to reinstall it. As well as uh, Zebra, if we wanted to do so. And it's showing for me to reinstall since I have installed both of these uh, package managers in different tutorials. So at this point, you should be able to set up those package managers and install whichever tweaks you would like for your particular device. So due to this being a Windows installation method, there are many problems which can occur at any iterative point in that process. So for example, there could be data corruption issues on the USB media that you're using. Uh, if you're using a CD or a DVD, for example, maybe it's not loading the ISO file correctly or uh, perhaps selecting the ISO file from Ventoy. For some reason, it just freezes or it's not working or maybe it fails during the pale rain process itself. There are many different points at which this process can fail, and there have been many issues reported on Reddit and other forums as well. So if you do run into any issues, uh, depending on the hardware that you're using, it may involve a unique sort of solution process. So feel free to post a comment in the chat, and hopefully we can 
put our heads together and, and try to resolve those issues as well. And hopefully others can benefit from the information that uh, we are able to receive and extrapolate from those uh, troubleshooting processes. But in any case, uh, that is the general process for installing PL Rain from a Windows machine. Uh, it's not exactly a program that lives inside Windows. It's more of booting through a Linux live distribution on a Windows computer, but this is generally the process which you would follow. So like I said, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them in the chat and hope you all have enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.